Hi guys and welcome back to another true crime and makeup time video. If you're new here my name is Zara and I post a new true crime video every single week so if you love makeup and you love true crime definitely hit that like button, hit that notification bell button, leave me a comment down below saying hi and if you haven't already guys I would love it if you would subscribe it would mean so much to me. It is so early in the morning right now for me like my voice I feel like is still waking up but I'm gonna be moving soon so I need to get some videos filmed but I'm so tired I'm like <sighs> today's case was requested by Sheeran and thank you so much and I don't even know what to say about this case when I read about it like the name itself Sheeran told me read about the roll red run case and I was like what the hell is that so when I began reading about it there's so much information, but it's not information that's easily deciphered. It's so many different opinions and thoughts. And I would love to know what you guys think at the end of this. Now, this case garnered attention for so many different reasons. For one, it happened over 10 years ago. And around that time is when SA in schools, especially, you know, committed by athletes, was coming under fire. And then secondly, because this case left a massive social media paper trail and then thirdly for the way its town reacted now with this case again you know i usually talk about cases that i feel are super important to talk about and this one for sure for our future generation especially if you have kids and my god i don't even know what's gonna happen with our next generation of kids i mean just wait till you guys hear about this case i'm terrified of what the world is becoming but hey maybe awareness especially on cases like this can help something please please god let's get into it now you guys know i like to start my stories off by giving you the background and trying to go back to front but we're kind of doing that but i feel like at the same time we're going to talk a little bit about the people involved and then we're going to just dive straight into what happened. So the town that this case takes place is called Steubenville. Now Steubenville is a town that is used to quite a bit of media attention, mainly for its Harding Stadium, which is like their crown jewel. This town used to be a steel town, but now this stadium, Okay, see, so it's like 10,000 people and it's called Death Valley. And it is home to the Big Red football team, which is Ohio's most celebrated high school program. I read in one article that stated, in Steubenville, football is not just a sport, it's a religion. And on Friday nights, people worship. And I was like, dang, that's serious. So apparently at this stadium, I'm sure someone is going to be from steubenville comment but apparently every time the big red team would score they have this massive horse sculpture mascot that would shoot like fire six feet into the air this horse was nicknamed man o war and i don't know anything about football like i don't even like i don't even watch some shows about football i think like one tree hill back in the day did i have football in it i don't know or basketball whatever but in australia footy is huge footy that's what we call it but it's not football it's like kind of like rugby is it or it's footy it's its own game but i get it people are quite serious about footy here but i think america's football culture or just like sport culture in general is wild like you guys are fans fan fans and this case made steubenville known all around America, but for different reasons. So there are three main people that we discuss in this case. And the first is Jane Doe. She's a 16 year old girl at the time when this case takes place. And obviously due to her age and privacy, we never find out her name. She's Jane Doe. The other two are boys, Trent Mays, who is 17 and Malik Richmond, who was 16 at the time that this takes place. And the two of these boys were both players on the big red football team, star athletes. So a quick little background on the boys. So Malik Richmond, he came from the rougher side of town and he, in his early years at least, he spent dodging stray bullets that would come into his home and 
watching a lot of the men in his life, his male role models, being incarcerated or killed. He turned to sports early on in his life as an escape from these realities. His father, Nathaniel Richmond, already had a criminal history when Malik was growing up. And when he was a kid, his father was actually incarcerated for five years for attempted murder. Malik does claim that his father's absence was hard on him. And as a kid, he began acting out and football was his outlet, his safety. Now, Trent, on the other hand, lived the opposite life, completely different life. He was a quarterback and an honor student, and he lived 15 minutes outside of Steubenville. Now, Trent was always going to be a football player. His father was a football coach, so it was in his DNA. Ever since Trent could remember, he shared a dream that many young boys shared in Steubenville, and that was to hear the roar of the big red fans at that stadium. Now, because there's so many different versions, so many different opinions, so many different comments made by so many different people, when I refer to what Jane Doe was thinking or how she or how she felt, I'm talking mainly about what she herself has claimed was her recollection from that night. But when I'm just stating about what happened that night, it's more so what's been alleged as to what was reported. On the night of Friday, August 11th, 2012, a game was taking place at the Harding Stadium. Trent and Malik were playing on the Big Red team and their team won that night. After the game, especially after a win, it was time to party. So the boys, they went and did their thing. Hours later, Trent had been messaging and texting back and forth with a girl he had been chatting with on social media. He had recently been talking to her and she was actually from across the river in Weirton, West Virginia. So they were allegedly talking and then as they were talking, she invites him to come on over to a party that her and her friends were going to be attending that night. And Trent agrees and over the course of that night, it's alleged that the three of them attended three different parties together. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of deferring opinions, deferring recollections of what happened that night, but I'm going to try and just explain what has been reported as accurately as I can. So when Trent and Malik arrived to the first party that, that Jane Doe was at, that she asked them to come to, the street where the party was being held was just it was a narrow street and it was just jam-packed with a ton of different cars. It's believed that there was around 40 to 50 teenagers at that party and no adults. And according to Malik and several other kids, there was a bunch of alcohol freely flowing at this party. And can someone explain to me how this happens, right? Because in Australia over here, we have a drinking age of 18 and look, you know, people under 18 definitely still do drink. But from what I can tell and what I've experienced, a lot of the parents are cool with it. Like as long as they're around, they're the ones buying the alcohol, providing it. And they, you know, kids, yeah, they get a little bit drunk, but they're not drinking that much, you know, to get drunk in front of the parents. They're just drinking and then they get drunk. But in America, I'm like, you always see on TV and I'm sure it's like not fully accurate, but then some people tell me it's accurate. So you always see on TV where they they have these house parties and there's like no adults around, but somehow there's so much alcohol and these parties are like wild and I just don't understand how does it happen? Like who who's are kids just throwing parties at their houses without their parents ever knowing? And then how do they clean it all up? Like it just doesn't make sense. I feel like in America you hear about these parties and I'm like, how? How does it happen? Anyway, so witnesses state that Jane Doe was one of the more intoxicated or tipsy kids at this party. Jane Doe herself says that she had a few drinks, mixed drinks, then a red Smirnoff ice drink in a red Solo cup with ice before she started to feel funny. She stated that this alcohol was making her act differently than normal when you know, she was drunk. Malik claims that Jane Doe had one arm wrapped around him and he just felt like she was coming onto him. After around midnight, the party was finishing up. And according to 
interviews that took place with Jane's friends, Jane had made it clear that she wanted to leave with Trent. Now, Jane's friends have also claimed that they resisted her leaving in a car full of boys, but Jane liked Trent and she trusted Trent, so she left with or wanted to leave with him to attend another party. So Jane gets into a car with Malik, Trent, and two other boys, and they drove off. According to Jane, there is little she remembers from the first party, this party I just explained, and waking up the next morning. So now, obviously, because she doesn't remember much till waking up the next morning, these next accounts are, I believe, mainly based off witnesses and Trent and Malik. So now they are at party number two. Now, this next party was much smaller than the previous party. According to witnesses, there are contradictory accounts whether Jane was even able to walk into this next party by herself without being assisted by Trent and Malik. Now, allegedly, when she got to this party, Jane was feeling quite sick. So she was taken to the bathroom where she threw up the first time. When she came out, a photo of Jane was taken, which would be infamous and be the turning point in this case. Now, I'm not going to share any photos of her, even this famous photo. I just don't think it needs to be shared over and over again. I'm sure she's had enough of that. So I'm just going to tell you about it. In this photo, you see Trent, you see Malik, and they're holding Jane by, so Trent is holding Jane, I believe by her legs or her arms. And then Malik is obviously holding the other end. So one boy is holding her arms and one boy is holding her by the legs. And Jane is just slumped in the middle of them. Like she seems quite like she seems passed out nearly and her head is hanging back in the photo and it's unclear whether her eyes are open or not. Now witness accounts of that night are conflicting as to the context of this photo, but most reasonable people would look at this girl or look at the photo and deduce that, Hey, this girl needs to be taken home right now. She's past the point of inebriated or at least taken somewhere to sober up. I mean, again, I've been in many of these situations, um, not me being drunk, but my friends being drunk, or even when I am drunk, it's like there's always someone who looks out for you and takes you somewhere to sober up, and that's what should have happened to Jane, and if it was my kid, that's what I, I would have hoped would have happened, but that's not what happens. Now, the person that took the photo of Jane was a big red football player. And he was also Jane Doe's ex-boyfriend. So he takes this photo and he posts it on Instagram. Malik claims, and I really want to make sure I read you their direct quotes because I think it's important to see the way they spoke about it. But Malik claims that Jane Doe was just like laughing. We were all talking, just clowning around. And that's when her ex-boyfriend was like, let me get a picture of this drunk bee. And that's when we took the picture. This picture, Malik claims, was just taken as a joke and that Jane Doe was involved in the joke and she was not carried out of the house this way. Jane Doe's lawyer later on claimed that this statement was bizarre and it's common sense as to what was happening that night that Jane Doe was not conscious in that picture and she was completely unaware of what was happening. That his client, Jane Doe, doesn't have any memory of what happened that night. So then witness accounts claim that Jane Doe began throwing up outside and that she throws up on her top, her blouse, and that Malik gives her his jacket to cover up and that after this, Jane Doe again begins asking for something to drink. Then Jane Doe once again gets back into the car with all of these boys and I'm going to be explaining what allegedly took place that night so this may trigger be triggering for some people so just keep that in mind so one of the other football players who was in the vehicle at the time this was taking place tells police that he used his phone and began videotaping what was going on in the car this boy says that Trent began exposing Jane Doe's breasts and then began her with his fingers. This boy goes on to say that 
Jane Doe was talking, but none of them could decipher her, her slurred speech. But Malik, who was seated in the front seat, claimed that Jane Doe was actually participating in this and that Trent was rubbing on her chest and Jane was kissing him back. Now, police would never see this video where she was participating because the next morning, this boy would delete it from his phone. I mean, I'm not even old, but what the hell is wrong with kids these days? Like, what? when did this take place? 2012. Oh my God. So I was like close in age to these guys. And I would never have done anything like this ever, ever. Like, no matter how drunk I am, like I've said this before, and then some of you guys were like, well, when you're drunk, you don't know anything. Well, no, not all the time. Because when I'm drunk, I'm still kind of like aware of what's going on. You know, even people around me, like they've told me like, no, 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 I'm aware of what's going on when I've, when I'm drunk. And Jane was to the point of, if, if the accounts are true, she was to the point of very, very drunk. And yes, she perhaps, you know, didn't know what was going on. And what the hell are these other guys doing? Why are you sitting in the car and your friend is doing this to a girl? Like, are we just having open orgies now? Like, is that just like our sexual behavior and our sexual activities? Like people can just watch. That's okay. Like I get if you're a swinger or something like that, but like, you're just a teenager and that's okay. Like what? I understand people hooking up, but hooking up like that in front of your friends, like exposing this girl like that, like, does it make you feel cool? Let me tell you, none of those boys respected that girl, let alone in that moment. Also in Ohio, this type of pension is considered rape. So after this alleged rape takes place, they move on to party number three. Now, again, by multiple witness accounts, at this party, okay, as soon as they get to this party, Jane is once again taken to the bathroom to throw up, which again proves how inebriated she really was and her lack of ability to consent to anything at this point. Now, when Jane Doe finishes throwing up, it's alleged that a second takes place, a second one. Multiple eyewitnesses have claimed that they saw Trent trying to get the girl to perform oral sex on Trent. Now, we're both wondering, hold on, where is this taking place? Because unless I'm completely like, okay, America is so different, I can't imagine it being that different, you know, like parties are a party, but who, you, like, so I'm thinking, okay, we're at this party and they're just like, yeah, Jane, like in the middle, like here, perform oral sex on me, but no. So what I believe happened from reading the documents, there's bedrooms, right? So they were in one of the bedrooms or one of the living areas upstairs and Jane is like on the floor and Trent starts unzipping his pants and trying to get Jane to perform or oral sex on him while she's laying on her back on the floor, like passed out. But even though these witnesses saw this, right? Like why didn't anyone stop? Because <sighs> they didn't try to stop it because at the time, no one really saw it as being forceful. So according to two witnesses who testified, this is what they saw Jane as, naked, unmoving, and silent. Naked, unmoving, and silent. Naked, unmoving, and silent. And this is not forceful behavior on Trent's part, okay? Okay. They go on to say that Trent had exposed himself while laying right next to her. Next, these witnesses state that they saw Malik and Trent both laying next to Jane Doe and sexually touching her in her groin area. They were using their hands to do this and another person came forward saying that he also saw this taking place. Is this not forceful yet? Malik then moved behind Jane Doe. I'm guessing he placed her in front of him, laying on him. And Malik then began Jane with his fingers. Trent's best friend then claims, I tried to tell Trent to stop it. You know, I told him, just wait. Wait till she wakes up if you're going to do any of this stuff. Don't do anything you're going to regret. Trent apparently responded, it's all right. Don't worry. That boy, Trent's best friend, 
then allegedly took a photo of what those boys were doing to Jane. And he claims he did this because he wanted her to know what had happened. Okay, but then the next morning, he deleted it from his phone. But hold on, he deleted it after showing multiple people this photo, which I just don't understand. Like at first I'm like, okay, you kind of seem like you're trying to do the right thing, like trying to gather gather some evidence in case Jane's kind of like, you know, I want to, you know, she wakes up and she's like, what happened to me? Here, I have some proof for you. But then you show people, like, are you showing them for proof? Okay, I guess we don't know how he showed them. Maybe he was like, yo, check this out. Like, look what these guys are doing. Like, you know, but then being Trent's best friend, it makes it harder to believe that he did it because he was, you know, looking out for Jane. But yeah, showing people and then deleting it, it just seems kind of like, okay, maybe he didn't want to be a snitch. You know, that whole snitch mentality. He didn't want to be labeled as one. And when I was researching this, I kind of was on his side, like, oh, you know, he was trying to do the right thing, but maybe he just didn't want to want to get in trouble or be labeled as a snitch. But then it's like, you don't take this photo and then you delete it after showing it to people. I don't know. What do you guys think about this guy? Another eyewitness states, I wouldn't say she was completely passed out, but she sure wasn't in any state to make a decision for herself. Now, Malik's lawyer claims that Jane Doe was conscious enough to provide Malik her passcode to her cell phone after the second alleged. He stated, that doesn't sound like a person that's incapacitated to the point where they cannot answer a question, let alone consent. Stupid. I could provide you the passcode to my phone in my sleep. I could be passed out and be like, yep, this is my passcode. Like, it's like a second what is it called? Like second nature at this point, especially nowadays, us kids with us kids, I'm like, but kids with phones, like it's just, it's just automatic, like boom, boom, pow. Like you can just like put it in. That's not, I don't, that's not, that's not an excuse. That doesn't mean she was able to consent because she knew her passcode. I'm sure she could have told you her address. Does that mean she is consenting? That night, multiple photos, videos, and tweets circulated on social media about Jane Doe. Now there was also allegedly a video that was circulating of Jane Doe covered in some type of bodily fluid. The Steubenville rumor mill already began to churn about rumors of what happened to the intoxicated girl. Naked videos of Jane Doe that circulated that night sparked a series of tweets, okay, on Twitter as well as a video from former Steubenville basketball player, 18-year-old Michael Nardianos. Now this idiot, okay, he's an actual idiot, he uploads a 12-minute rant talking about what was happening to Jane Doe. Now he wasn't present during the alleged, no, 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 he had just been sent or seen some videos, images, we don't know exactly what, but he had seen what was happening to Jane Doe in some way or another. And he, in this 12 minute rant, is making jokes about what was happening to Jane Doe. I watched it, barely. It's very difficult to watch it and not smash your computer screen. Michael tells jokes about how dead the alleged victim is, as well as openly acknowledging that she had been raped. I'm gonna read you some quotes of this fine young gentleman. They peed on her. That's how you know she's dead, because someone pissed on her. They raped her quicker than Mike Tyson raped that one girl. It isn't really because you don't know if she wanted to or not. Her puss is about as dry as the sun right now. She is deader than Trayvon Martin. Just so you know, you can get a picture of what a lovely, lovely young man he was. His parents must be so proud. Later that night, okay, this idiot tweeted, the song of the night is definitely me by Nirvana. During this video, it's just a voice off camera. This voice states, Trent and Malik someone. Now it's unclear how many Steubenville students are in the room at the time, but it's clear that there's a few people present and two people off camera actually pull Michael up for making light of a rape that had allegedly taken place. And one of them asks Michael, 
what if that was your daughter? And then he just very simply says, but it isn't. Now this douchebag, he also posted a picture of Jane Doe from that night and he put the caption, some people deserve to be peed on. Like that video alone makes me wonder what were Michael and his friends either watching or looking at or been sent of what was happening to Jane Doe for them to make or for Michael to make these comments. What the hell were they looking at? It just makes me think that they were watching a video and someone had sent them a video of stuff that was happening to Jane Doe. It really does. The next morning, Jane Doe wakes up in a home that she was not familiar with. She had never been to this house before and she wakes up naked. The last thing she remembered from that night was leaving a party with her friends behind her. So she wakes up embarrassed, scared, and not sure what to think. She wakes up naked in an unfamiliar place under a blanket surrounded by three unfamiliar boys. She said it was really scary. And again, where are the parents of this home? Like, are they just like, oh yeah, there's just like five kids naked upstairs. That's cool. What? So Jane Doe gets up to get dressed, but no one could find her phone or her underwear. Now her girlfriends, okay, they had spent much of the previous night reading all these tweets about her and they were anxiously waiting to pick her up. And that part kind of didn't make sense to me because I was like, well, if she didn't have her phone, how did they know where she was? Maybe the tweets like gave her location away. I didn't understand how they got in contact with her, but I'm guessing somehow through some friends, I don't know. So two of her friends picked up her, Malik and Trent, and then they dropped these boys off to their respective places, which was a short trip apparently. And then after that, they started yelling at Jane in the car about what they were hearing from the night before. She didn't remember anything and she didn't know what they were talking about. And Jane claims that she felt very embarrassed and freaked out about what she was hearing. As I mean, I'm sure you can imagine. I mean, you know, you just think you just went to this party and you didn't really think anything happened. But I think your gut feeling kind of tells you, right? Like something isn't right. So after she gets dropped off to her mom's house, she immediately just tells her mom like, hey, I can't remember what happened last night and I can't find my phone. And she also couldn't find her shoes, might I add. And I think you know, that speaks a little bit as to her relationship with her mom because th there's no way in hell I'd be telling my mom like, hey, or my dad, hey, you know, I lost my shit last night. Like I would just be trying to find it first because I would literally get my ass handed to me. But Jane claims that getting on trouble was the last thing on her mind. And eventually she started hearing about what was being circulated on social media. So Jane says she thought she knew everything she drank that night and she had never blacked out before. And I'm guessing after this, she told some of her family members what was happening or they perhaps also started hearing about what was happening. And only after them and several family members and friends pushing her, did she decide or agree to go to the hospital to get checked out. So she goes and then over there, she gets told by doctors Kit wasn't wasn't really going to do anything because it had been two days since the party had taken place and she had already showered and washed her clothes by this point. No physical evidence of a was recovered. And have you guys noticed, right? Like these in these types of cases, these clothes always get washed. And I'm not saying I don't believe it. That's not the issue. But I'm just like, dang, like, I take a few days to do some laundry. Like she comes home from a party and then the laundry's done, you know? So it's kind of crazy how quick evidence can just be destroyed. Now, Jane was very reluctant to tell the doctors the names of these boys because she just was not ready for the drama that would ensue. Now, when this was happening, the boys were repeatedly texting Jane Doe and the morning after. So the morning after and the next following days, they were repeatedly texting Jane Doe, you know, freaking out and saying, was she going to tell the police? Now, the message transcripts and multiple message transcripts are available online, but they're only available in snippets. I believe you got to pay um, quite a bit to um, get the full transcript, but I got most of it. And honestly, 
oh, I'm sickened, sickened, sickened. And look, before we get into it, even if some of you guys think that Jane Doe was wrong, that, you know, she also played a part. She shouldn't have drank so much. She shouldn't have gone to a party with people she didn't know. Yes, she probably has learned her lesson. Guys, people make mistakes. I don't think she was out here trying to be a hoe in these streets. You know what I mean? Like she liked this guy and she probably was drinking and trying to have a good time, maybe even trying to impress him. Maybe something was put in her drink, but it doesn't change the fact that these boys did something that they 100% shouldn't have done and whether she was consenting or not you know like it's just terrible behavior I understand sex and you know sexual acts are normal in teenagers there's no way am I arguing that fact but it's like the publicness of it and the like embarrassing her and putting her in the car and stuff come on is that really just normal? Are we out here teaching 16 year olds that this is normal, that yeah, you can, you know, a girl in a car full of boys, like that's normal, you know, let's do that. That's, that's a way to respect a girl. And I'm not saying doing those acts is wrong, but it should be done in private between two people or three people, whatever it is, whatever you want to consent to, but it should be like a private thing. It shouldn't just be out here for everyone to see. You don't respect that girl if that is happening. And honestly, this is a whole separate issue and we could talk about it forever, okay? Multiple things that need to be done in this world. This is one of them. But the way Trent talks, I really hope his parents didn't raise him this way. I really hope he didn't hear his father speak this way and that's why he thinks it's okay to speak this way because he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't. So Jane Doe is obviously JD, Trent is Trent, and then the other initials are friends and uh of either the boys alone or of like mutual friends so jane doe this is the text jane doe been crying all day i'm not a slut they took advantage of me trent mays says to cody saltzman i'm pissed all i got was a hand job i should have her cody saltzman says you should have lol trent to ew delete that vid off youtube her dad and coach knows Seriously, delete. EW says, deny to the grave. Trent Mays says, I should have raped her now that everyone thinks I did, but she wasn't awake enough. Eventually, her parents report the assault to the police. On 14th August at 1.38 a.m., Jane Doe's parents walk into Steubenville police station with a USB drive full of evidence, information about what happened to their daughter. They had photographs, Twitter posts, and the video of Michael Nodino, Nodiano, sorry, on it. It was all the evidence that the girl's parents had and it left the police to figure out what actually happened that night. Ohio investigators confiscated and analyzed 15 iPhones, two iPads, collected hundreds of text messages from dozens of students, interviewed almost 60 people, including students, coaches, school officials, and parents. Can you imagine what all the parents were thinking? So many people thought so many different things, but I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of the young girls' parents were freaking out about this. 10 days after the alleged assault, on the strength of witness accounts, okay, Trent Mays and Malik Richmond were arrested in the middle of the night on charges of rape and kidnapping. Now, the kidnapping charge was later dropped, but the rape charge would stand still. Trent Mays was also charged with distributing child pornography for sharing photos of the alleged underage victim. Jane Doe. Now, by this time, 10 days later, a lot of the photos, videos, a lot of the evidence was deleted from a lot of these kids' phones, but not all were lost. In addition to that famous photo of Jane Doe being carried by the boys, two other photos were also recovered from Trent's phone. One of the photos shows Jane Doe lying naked face down on the floor 
And then another one shows her asleep on the couch, also naked. The image of Jane Doe being carried by Malik and Trent has been seen by millions of people. Millions. Jane Doe believes that she was possibly drugged that night. And this claim has been disputed by Jane's very own friends, now former friends. And these girls were there that night when this was taking place and they testified against Jane for the defense. Can you believe that? An expert for the defense would say that Jane's blood alcohol reading would have been an estimated 0.18 or 0.25 and that the girl should have been able to voluntarily make her own decisions even if she didn't remember them. Now this testimony, okay, <laughs> was debating the fact whether the girl was blacked out drunk or passed out drunk. I can't even believe that's an attempt at a defense. The prosecutor's name was Marion Hemeter and she made quite a strong statement. She stated that the evidence was overwhelming and the things that made the victim an imperfect witness made her a perfect victim. This case isn't about a YouTube video. This case isn't about social media. This case isn't about big red football. This case is about a 16-year-old girl that was taken advantage of, toyed with, and humiliated. And it's time for the people who did that to her to be held responsible. Now, because it was such an intense social media case, a blogger by the name of Alexandra Goddard heard about it. And because she was originally from this town, it actually caught her attention because she was like, what is everyone talking about? So she started digging into the case and the backgrounds of the people involved. Malik and Trent were already arrested at this point, but she kept digging and what she found shocked her. She found photos and videos of the victim and comments that were mocking her assault. Alexandra states, it got uglier as the night went on as to how many people knew what was happening to Jane Doe and how many people didn't do anything to stop it. Now, Alexandra has a blog called Printified and she published her first post about the Steubenville rape on August 23rd, 2012. And her blog soon became like the hub for everyone to go seek information about this rape trial. Now, as if this case couldn't get any crazier, in December of 2012, that 12-minute video that rant of Michael Nodiano's, you know, being a dickhead, was released and leaked, okay, by an internet hacking group called Anonymous. Now, Anonymous threatened to dox the alleged perpetrators as well as other athletes who were present who either witnessed or knew of the alleged assault, but they were never charged with a crime. This footage that Anonymous released went viral and Michael's famous line of, she is so right now became like the slogan of this case. This sparked protests in the town in support of Jane Doe and her identity was still protected. And in January 2013, more than a thousand people attended this protest. It took place at the Jefferson County Courthouse and many other survivors of assault actually took the stand and shared their stories. This case also brought attention to the prevalence of assault as well as the culture in society. Another issue about this case was whether it was actually covered up by the town of Steubenville. The reason for this is that the police till this day have not arrested the other people who either participated in or witnessed the assault. By all accounts, this was public. Horrifying videos and tweets that the police had access to made it clear that a lot of the kids knew exactly what had gone on. Many, many may have participated and none of those kids or athletes were arrested or charged and were still playing football in the big red team. High school football was everything in Steubenville and their home team lived up to that reputation. Now I have some statements from people in the town and Nate Hubbard, he was 27 at the time and he was a big red football volunteer coach. He stated, the rape was just an excuse, I think. What else are you going to tell your parents when you come home drunk like that and after a night like that? 
She had to make up something. Now people are trying to blow up our football program because of it. A player in the football team tweeted, we're not going to let dumb sluts like this mess up our state championship goal. Now, after this case, the integrity of Steubenville's justice system came under scrutiny. The first prosecuting attorney, she had to recuse herself from this case because her son was a player on the big red football team and her son may have been present at these parties. Then the first judge in the case had to recuse himself because of his ties to the football community. The boys remained under house arrest while awaiting their trial, which began in February of 2013. The boys' lawyers claimed that they were being tried unfairly online and that they were going to be exonerated once all the facts were known. The police chief stated that the thing he found the most disturbing about this case was that there were multiple people around when this was taking place. He stated, nobody had the morals to say, hey, stop, that isn't right. If you could charge people for not being decent human beings, a whole lot of people would have been charged that night. Marion Hemeter, you know, the next prosecutor, she stated, she was a toy to them that night. And the bottom line is we don't have to prove that she said no. All we have to prove is when she's being that she was unresponsive and not in a position to consent and that the boys knew it. The boys' attorneys claimed that the boys were not guilty of anything and that Jane Doe was able to consent that night. They go on to state, what we believe we will be able to prove is that she voluntarily proceeded throughout the night with our client. There is no indication that she was somehow so intoxicated that she could not have consented to any of the contact that occurred. And they're talking about, this was Trent's lawyer. So he's saying that whatever Trent did is right because she was able to consent to everything. And I don't know how he knows that he wasn't there. Then Malik's attorney also felt the same way. He was like, no, 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 she consented. My client did nothing wrong. At the hearing, Jane Doe's mother claimed that Jane Doe was traumatized and she could not attend school. She just could not get over what had happened. They stated that Jane Doe's friends had shunned her. Other parents were keeping their kids away from her. That Jane Doe does not sleep at night and that she often hears her daughter crying for hours. On March 17, 2013, a judge convicted Trent Mays and Malik Richmond of digital. The judge found that the boys had used their fingers to digitally Jane Doe and that she could not have consented to the acts that had taken place that night. That it was impossible for her to consent because she was incapacitated. Malik was sentenced to a year in juvenile custody and was released in March of 2014. Malik was sentenced to a year in juvenile custody and was released in January 2014 after 10 months, while Trent was given two years and he was released in January 2015 after 22 months served. Both men went on to play college football in the US. They both went on with their lives while Jane Doe has to deal with this rape and assault forever. Nothing changes. And what about everyone else? What about everyone else that had seen what was taking place? I mean, so far, the only person I read that tried to sort of stop anything was Trent's best friend. He asked him, what are you doing, Trent? Wait, wait till she is freaking able to consent. There was a a headline in the news that read, is this football town putting its daughters at risk to protect its sons? The head football coach, he would threaten football suspensions for underage drinking, but not for substantiated allegations of assault. Steubenville became the symbol for the boys will be boys mentality over the safety of their girls. I mean, from the social media posts I saw online, as well as the message boards from like the parents and stuff of of these kids, it's just shocking to see what they really think about what happened that night and that people are really okay with laughing about what happened that night. In August of 2017, five years after this took place, the judge in this case was shot outside of his courtroom. The shooter was the father of Malik Richmond. Now the judge, he was also carrying a gun and he was also with a probation officer who was carrying a gun and they returned fire, they both returned fire, and they shot and killed Malik's father, Nathaniel, at the scene. Authorities don't think the actual case against his son is what caused Nathaniel to attack this judge. He had actually been, he had actually had several encounters with this judge on different crimes, including a wrongful death lawsuit, which he filed in 20. 20- 
15 for the death of his mother because he believed that the housing authority where she lived caused her death. The judge was involved in all of these cases and that's what they believe is the reason what caused Nathaniel to attack this judge and attempt to kill him. I mean, how does Jane Doe feel? We don't know. And that's how it should be. There was a Netflix documentary about this case called Roll Red Roll and the director was meticulous in protecting Jane's identity. But she did tell viewers that the girl, she grew up, she got married and she moved on with her life. And I mean, her identity being protected has allowed her to live a fuller life and move on from this horrific chapter in her life. Rape and murder are both crimes in which one person takes the life of another. The difference is that in one, the finality of death happens immediately. In the other, the victim has to live out a life that has changed forever. Trent, at least in his text messages, seemed to not give a damn. He didn't believe what he did was wrong. He literally has that attitude of, you know, an, like a young athlete who gets whatever he wants, that he just can do whatever he wants, and that he didn't do anything wrong. Whatever he did, he was allowed to do. What is the appropriate punishment for a person like him? I don't have an answer to that. But I ask these questions because I think it's a discussion worth having. Even CNN went under fire for, I think CNN is like a big issue right now, especially, but CNN went under fire for releasing an article about how tragic the situation was that the boys found themselves in. The rapists, how tragic of a situation they were in. The boys were in. It seemed a lot of people, not only from the town of Steubenville, but all around the world, have stated that Jane Doe caused this, you know, to herself. And that was due to how intoxicated she was. I mean, of course, because it's always the girl's fault, you know, it's our fault. I mean, at this point, it's like men cannot be blamed for rape because, especially if they're a high value man, it's like, why did you put yourself in a position? where you're gonna turn this man on and now he wants to have sex with you. So it's not his fault, it's your fault. The way they praise the boys, the victim blaming that, you know, her coming out has now tarnished the town's football reputation. The town will now suffer because she came forward. It's mind blowing and it's so upsetting that this rally took place where a lot of sexual assault survivors came out to share their stories and everything just kind of got swept under the rug. That the perpetrators, dealt with like one year in juvie, you know, two years. They got away with it another way because they got to kind of just like live their lives, you know, move on, serve a couple years in a teenage retreat. <laughs> what do you guys think? I will leave some further links down in the description box if you want to read a little bit more about this case. There is so much to talk about. So please start a discussion in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. And I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Besitos. Bye.